uh, praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahusha. That's the Paleo Hebrew name who we call Jesus of Christ uh, in the world today. But according to the scriptures, the name Yehovah, uh, Jehovah, goes back to the Hebrew uh, word Yahweh. Okay, and according to that, we know there's no uh, vowels in the Hebrew alphabet. So the name comes back to Yahweh, not what you see right here. It says, uh, this expression translate Yahweh applied to the city seen by the prophet Ezekiel in, a, in his vision. Uh, recorded in chapter 40 through 48 in Ezekiel. The visionary city is depicted as four square, 4,500 long cubits to a side, 2,331, 7,650 feet, and as having 12 gates, each bearing the name of the tribes of Israel. So, uh, the kingdom of heaven is only for the, tri the tribes of Israel. Okay. So this is, uh, and, and those people are those who was carried over here to America on slave ships, the Native American Indians and Latinos. Okay, these are the 12 lost tribes that's going to, uh, uh, that's going to be uh, in the gates, in the kingdom with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Okay. It says the visionary city of Ezekiel's prophecy is to belong to all the house of Israel. That's including the northern tribes and the southern tribes. Okay. Judah, uh, Benjamin, Levite. Then you have the northern tribes of uh, Manasseh, Dan, Reuben, and so on, you know. It says the name Yahweh Shema or Yahweh himself is there, which signify a rep representational presence of Yahweh, like that expressed in other texts, such as Psalms 46, 132. Uh, Isaiah 24, Joel 3, and Zechariah chapter 2 and 10. It says, Were Yahweh, whom the heavens of the heavens cannot contain, is spoken of as though residing in an earthly city or place. Okay, so Yahweh by Shem Kingdom, okay, is going to be uh, on the earth. Okay. Uh, the expression translate from two words, Yahweh, Jeremiah twenty six and six, and thirty six and sixteen. It says uh, Jeremiah twenty three and five through uh, verse five and six is a messianic prophecy describing the future king sprouting from David's line to execute justice and righteousness in the land since he rules as God's representative even as David and others sat upon Yahweh Shai's throne as God's anointed king the prophecy says this is the name which he will be called Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is our righteousness so Yahweh in the name Baha Shem in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, he is our righteousness. There is no basic for claiming, as some have, that this means that Yahweh Shah, the Messiah, the Hamashiach, and Yahweh are the same forming one God. See, because the son uh, has the same spirit as the father. 
Okay, but these are not these are two different entities. It says this can be seen from the fact that the similar messianic prophecy at Jeremiah applies the identical expression to Jerusalem, saying, uh, and this is what she will be called Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh is our righteousness. In both cases, the expression shows that God's name, Yahweh, placed both upon his promised king and upon his chosen capital is a guarantee of their righteousness. Moreover, the justice and righteousness emanating, emanating, emanating from or expressed by these sources are the product of full devotion to Yahweh and his divine, his divine will, bringing Yahweh's blessings and directions. Okay, so Yahweh is our righteousness. He is our help. He is um, the one who heals us. Okay. Okay. He does all that. He heals. He wounds. He, he kills. He he does all that. But uh, he is our righteous righteous help. Okay. Because he is our power, and he chose the twelve tribes of Israel to be his people. So we're gonna uh, I'm gonna read something else so that we have a better understanding. Uh uh Yahweh by Shun Yahusha. Okay. It says Yahweh's statement in Eden that he would put enmity between the seed of his adversary and the seed of the woman did not change him from being the God of peace. The situation then was the same as in the days of the earthly life of his son, Yahweh, who after referring to his union with his heavenly father said, do not think I came to put peace upon the earth. I came to put not peace, but a sword. You see that? These people saying that the Lord is coming back to bring you know to 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 uh to bring everybody together those are, that's a false statement okay because the most high bring a division to separate the righteous from the good the righteous i'm sorry the righteous from the wicked okay he says even with families but it was because of his adherence to and proclamation proclamation of God's righteous standards and truth. Division resulted because many individuals hardened their hearts, meaning hardened their minds, against these truth. Yeah, so a lot of people doing that right now, fighting against this truth. You know, but they're going to lose in the end because it's only the truth, you know, is, 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 is going to um, overpower the, the wicked and the lies. They say, while others accept them, which means the brother that's in the truth, the, 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 uh, the Hebrew Israelites, this was unavoidable if the divine principles were to be upheld, but the blame lay with the rejects of what was right. So to enmity was foretold to come because Yahweh's perfect standards would allow for no condoning of the rebellious course of Satan's seed. Okay, and Satan's seed is the so-called, as who we would call today the, uh, the Edomites of the Bible. That's Satan's seed, the so-called red man. Uh, it says, Yahweh, disapproval of such ones and his blessing of those holding to a righteous course would have a devised effect, even as in the case of Cain and Abel. Okay, because Cain was uh, was wicked and, and, and represented the wicked side, and Abel represented the right the righteous side. They say the rebellious course chosen by men and wicked angels 
instituted a challenge to Yahweh Shai Rifle's sovereignty and to the good order of all the universe. Standing up to the, this challenge has required Yahweh to become a mainly purchase of war. Okay, because he is a man of war, according to the scriptures. You know, and uh, he's over, you know, uh, over our armies of the earth. It says, defending his own good, his own good name and righteous standards, fighting on behalf of those who love and serve him, and executing judgment upon those meriting destruction. He does not hesitate to use his almighty power devastatingly at times as at the flood in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and in the delivery of Israel from Egypt. Okay, so he's going to fight for his people and deliver his people who believe in him, you know. Same way, you know, when he flooded the earth, you know, this time you're going to uh, flood the earth with fire, you know. So, um, and those who believe and in his truth, you know, he's going to deliver, uh, deliver them out of it. It says, and he has no fear of making known of the details of his righteous warfare. He makes no apologies, having nothing for which to be ashamed. His respect for his own name and righteousness is rep represents. I'm sorry, so like his respect for his own name and righteousness it represents, as well as his love for those who love him, compels him to act. See that? So the Most High always sent his angels up to fight uh, before his people. You see. Because he is the uh, Yahusha of armies, okay? He's a man of war. He's not a weak man, as the world uh, portray him to be, you know, according to the image that's put up. It says the expression from 283 times with variations in the scriptures translate the Hebrew Yahawa. There's no O's or E's. It's supposed to be Yahweh. Uh, the prophetic book, particular, particularly Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Zechariah, contains by far the majority of its occurrences. Paul and James quoting from or alluding to the prophecies used to express, use the expression in their writings. It says the Hebrew word uh, tasva, singular plural, tasva, alt, basically means a literal army of soldiers or combat forces, as at Genesis 21. Deuteronomy 20 and many other texts, however, the terms is also used as a figurative sense, as in the heavens and the earth, all. I'm sorry, as in the heavens and the earth and all their army, or the sun and the, moon and the stars, all the army of the heavens. The plural form is employed a number of times as applying to the Israelite forces. See that? So the Israelite force is in the heavens. Okay, we don't see a, a physical force, but we have a spiritual force. That goes out before the Lord's people and fight battles, especially when you know the Most High people are being oppressed and um, in, in captivity. Or uh, you know, the Most High he, he he comes to deliver his people in a certain period of time. Okay, it says uh, as at Exodus. Some scholars believe that the time that I'm sorry, some scholars believe that the armies in the expression Yahweh Shai, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai or armies include not only the angel, angelic forces, but also the 
Israelite army and the enemy heavenly bodies. However, it appears that the armies signify are primarily, if not exclusively, the angelic forces. See that? So we have angelic forces that's going to fight the battle for, uh, for the Lord people and those who believe in his truth. Okay? Those who have faith, keeping the commandments to the best of their ability on this side, the Most High is going to fight for you. Okay? So according to the scriptures, the children of Israel doesn't have a physical army. It has a spiritual army. Okay? And that's, a, that, that's, that's right there is something that can't be messed with. You know, nothing can go up against the, the, uh, the angelic forces. Okay? These forces coming from the, uh, from the heavens uh, is way more advanced than what uh, the so-called armies of the earth have. That's why you, you see a lot of these so-called UFOs as they say, are being spotted in the earth because, you know, there are angelic forces and spirits, angel spirits are in these, uh, these, these so-called aircrafts or, or uh, space machines, you know. So we know, them, we know them as to be cherries of the Lord, okay? And this is how the so-called children of Israel the lost uh, tribe is going to go back to their homeland by these vehicles. So, in the angelic forces. So, I want to share that with you guys today. Remember to uh, like the video. Get back with the next one. Peace.